keep you uh, waiting uh, any longer. Uh, welcome. Um, my name is Tom Zeppenfeld. I'm, uh, I flew in here yesterday from the Netherlands together with my colleague uh, Remy Alkemade. We are from uh, Grafilion, a very small company. And what we basically uh, do is that we have created, on top of Neo4j, an enhanced user interface, but also an environment in which you can build applications in a graph. So the application is a graph, actually. And, uh, well, I, I know that I, carried, I get carried away when I talk about my product. So to avoid that, I pre-recorded uh, a video, and I will talk, do, the, do a live uh, voiceover um, during that, uh, that video. Okay, basically, when you log on to our product, you get, a, you get a dashboard where you have a number of shortcuts on the top left, and you have a window where you can enter a Cypher query, you have a window where you can enter an Elasticsearch query, and here you have a number of panels that will display stuff that you are looking at, detailed stuff. So let's, normally you start with Cypher, and in this default uh, query, you get, uh, you get a visualization with icons with different shapes and styles, etc. And when you look at, uh, well, let's zoom on, on, on John, uh, and when I click on John, I get here, I get the detailed properties, but also a neighbor's view that allows you to explore the graph in a controlled way, not something that explodes in your face like sometimes happens when you have a lot of notes with Neo4j. I can edit it in an edit screen. Well, let's make it, uh, let John female and uh, let's call him her Hillary. Hillary, you see that the shape is, uh, is changed. And if I now want to look at, uh, I can, uh, I can uh, bring the view just down to, to just Hillary. And from there, if I want to explore the neighbors of Hillary in a controlled way, I can handpick them over here. So I can bring them into the, the diagram. Or I can just select an entire group. You see here that there are different label types and relationships. And I can also uh, add new nodes. I can create another person in this diagram. Let's bring in another, another lady, Juliet. And you can keep on adding properties. You can also add files to nodes or to relationships. They will be stored not in the node itself, but in a separate repository. And by clicking two nodes, uh, you can also, also create new relationships. So you do not have to do that in Cypher. You just do it in this, in this uh, user interface. Um, okay, so this is just uh, this is um, uh, everything based on Cipher. Uh, you can also uh, use our uh, Elasticsearch integration, where you type. You can uh, bring on all the Juliets that are in the in the database. Uh, it searches all the properties; they are automatically indexed. Um, and um, uh, but you can also not just, you can do advanced cipher. For instance, if you want to, to have a shortest path, shortest path is of course a function that is, uh, that is already in Neo4j, but we, built, we, we included it in a, in a shortcut. So then you get uh, something, uh, something like this. Um, but very often you also want to look at different patterns. Where, where can I find different patterns in my database? Now, and now I'm going to bring up uh, Hillary and her car. And you can easily, with what we call isomorphs, so you can, you can fish by just clicking, you indicate a pattern, and by, by um, uh, requesting isomorphs, it finds directly all the persons that are, that are linked to cars through a drives link. And what it basically does is when, it, when you select the stuff in the diagram, it dynamically builds the cipher to return this result. So you here you have all the same, the similar patterns in the database. Um, well, this is, uh, this is just one way of, of interacting. Uh, you can, now I'm going to talk about interaction between different types of views. Here, for instance, we have a Google Maps. We have integrated it. And if I select multiple items in my table and click on the shortcut, it sends them to the, to the map. So this is what we call an interaction between different views. We have a table view and a map view in, in here. Um, we can also send from the Elasticsearch, we can send Paris to the map. So this is everything you just can, can control and program it in a way that it will show you shortly. 
Here is another example where I have made an, uh, an interaction between table views and different Google charts. So here if I click on one of the, the rows, it generates three charts. And you see it's, it's, that's not speeded up, that's really the speed, it's quite fast. And also from one chart, you can, uh, you can uh, create an interaction to the other card. Now, now let's look at the back at how this is actually, how this, how this works. We have in, uh, in uh, Interactor, we have something that we call diagrams, which are in fact selected nodes in a specific layout. So now I'm going to bring up the logic behind this interaction between the table view and the charts. So here I have, I have my, uh, this is a query, the green, those are queries, the green squares are the charts and this one is the table view. So I have this, this query that generates this time records view, which is over here. And if I have here between, and this is, this is all in Neo4j, eh? so we have a time records node and a chart node with a row click relationship, which in fact works as a trigger, as an event trigger, and which can also carry data. So and from this chart data, so if I click here, all these three charts are generated, and from this bar chart, I can generate the second bar chart. So, you're, so you really build the application inside your graph. Um, that's also when you have a pre-recorded video, you have to what what's come next. <laughs> um, Okay, yeah. Okay, there, there's even an easier way to build that. We have here our repository of a number of functions. The square ones are the visible ones, the views, etc., and the, the, the circular ones are the queries and all kinds of other procedures that you do not, that are not really user interface. So what I'm going to do now is build a very small application. I'm going to add one query to my canvas, and it appears here, and you can see when I, when I select that query, it's a very simple query. It just uh, returns 10 random, uh, uh, random relationships, and I'm going to add a network view to that. So what I wa now want to do is a query that, that sends its output to the network view. So when I select both of them, the system detects, okay, there are different types of triggers that are possible between those views. And in this case, I will select the success trigger so that everything that is, comes out of this query is sent to that network view. And to try it out, to try that, I can actually run it. Okay, I run it from here, and then, okay, this is my first result. So now I created a very simple, simple output. Now let's do something more complex. From this network view, I want to have a list of, a list or a table of uh, its neighbors. So I need to bring in a table view. And I need an additional query that gets that gets the uh, that, that assures that I get the data from the right neighbors. So in this case, I'm going to enter a, para uh, a query with a parameter. This is my query two, and it says it has a query where uh, where I have a parameter over here. So what I do have to now have to do now is to create another event from my network view to um, uh, to this query on a node click, which sends the ID of the node here and it sends it as a parameter to that query. And that query returns its results to the table view. So this is, this is also how Interactor itself is built. It's just components that are linked together by nodes and uh, events between them. If I run it now, okay, I have the same network view, of course, but now if I click on one of the elements, it shows up the list of the table. So this is how you very gradually you can build your applications. Um, well, this set, of, this set of functions is extensible. We made it uh, the, the community version which will be available. And here I'm gonna hold it a little bit. Um, this, we, will, we will bring out a community version very soon, but uh, with a limited number of functions in here. Um, okay, let's get back to where I was. Okay, I'll stop it over here. 
uh, this is uh, a short demo that I want to, uh, want to show you, which is an application that was built in Interactor uh, for fraud detection. Imagine a bank that has a number of bank accounts over here, and they give it a status, and then gradually they explore based on the rules that they internally apply to for detection, what is a suspect bank account or what is a fraudulent bank account. And there are some interesting features in there um, that, will, that will pop up um, in a way. So here, uh, I, I select a status fraud, and this bank account is then brought to the canvas. And from here, I'm going to, uh, to expand it. That means, in this case, that I'm going to bring in other accounts that have, that have had certain type of transaction with this, uh, with this bank account. And some, some of those uh, accounts, because of the amounts or because of the frequencies, will be, will be identified as, uh, as fraudulent, and other ones will be identified as, uh, uh, or characterized as uh, um, a suspect. Uh, you can see that over here, this list is automatically updated because here the, the number, the, the, let's say the status of the fraud, uh, the status of the bank account is also visible. And you can see that there are overlapping cases. So apparently the, the, the specialist that was looking here is also looking, there are other specialists that are looking into other cases. For this application, we also built an option to bring in all the IP addresses from which which were involved in all kinds of, uh, of, of uh, um, uh, activity or fraudulent or su suspect activity. And we can bring in the account holders um, uh, from, from uh, um, let's say, the persons that were holding these accounts and other accounts that they are, uh, they are managing. So it gets more and more complicated. And you see that the, the overlapping cases, this one is updated every time everything changes, something changes over here. Uh, for instance, you can, and what is interesting now is that here I have a, another, a second network view in which I can display my, my, let's say, the intersection, overlapping cases and the intersection. So if I click this one, it's going to pop up here with, uh, and highlight it here that I have here, those are the two same. So this is very interesting if you have multiple graphs and you want to have the intersection. Another example, you, because you can have different types of overlap, you can have a partial overlap, or in this case, uh, an entire inclusion, so that all the nodes that are over here, they're also over there. And by highlighting them automatically, you can easily see where they are. So this, this application you can build in 10 to 12 hours, just by clicking the components together. And uh, you can also add data to it, because for instance, if those persons are in fact aliases or fraudulent identities from a sus another person, you can add new, per new, um, uh, new items to the, to the network and they are immediately visible for all the investigators that are present. So imagine what this would do, for instance, for the Panama Papers, if you have journalists in different parts of the world, they could easily see, okay, there are other people that are, people that are working with the same, with, on the same, uh, the same entities or persons. Okay, this seems like, a, let's say, a kind of, well, not too simple application, but if you look at, uh, at how, intel uh, how uh, internally it has been programmed, I bring up the, uh, uh, the diagram of that specific application. And this is the entire application. Just a couple of nodes. We have two network views, we have two, uh, two table views, and the rest is just cipher queries. Yeah? For instance, uh, here, those cipher queries over here, those are the rules that are applied that bring up the different accounts and that set the status. These are the, uh, the queries to bring in the IP addresses or the account holders. And there is a, a query over here uh, to find the overlapping cases. So in fact, this is, if you bring it together and you have all the, let's say, the triggers between the, the elements, it creates your application. So, and that's what we call an analysis user interface and the app in the graph. Any questions? Was it that clear? Yes? 
would generate uh, cipher. Uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, when I, the, for the, the, the isomorphs, the patterns, yes. Yes. Yeah. This is ideal. We use this. This tool can be very well used in, in, in situations where you have where you want to do prototyping, and you don't have a hardcore developer. I'm not a hardcore developer myself, so you can easily prototype or you build applications that have a short life life cycle. You just can easily build it or have managers or data scientists build their own their own dashboards. Yeah. Yes. Pardon. No, no, no. You can have, if you have an existing Neo4j, you just install, uh, install Interactor on top of it. It creates a number of, of, uh, of additional nodes. And in, uh, um, there are two ways of doing it. You can, you can integrate, integrate the nodes into your, your own data set, but it has the capability in our professional version to have a separate graph where you have all the function nodes and the other uh, part where you have all your business data. So you can. They don't mix up. Yeah, uh, there was a. Okay, you meant this part? Yeah, okay, let's. Okay, now I'm going to live. Okay, here you have all your uh, your properties, the keys, key value pairs. So you can edit you can edit a node from here by uh, right clicking, but you can also edit over here. And here are all the neighbors. Yeah, but you can explore, you can handpick them so that they don't you don't have that multitude of of, uh, of neighbors at the same time. Yeah. Okay, if there are no questions, then. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right.